Entertainment Experience. I'm Jared Guillory, and I'm sitting here with the wonderful Tony Gulas. How's it going, Tony? I wouldn't describe myself as one. Oh, I would. I would. This is one of the best local musicians. The, this is Louisiana's favorite flavor at its best. Tony, tell me, tell me some of some. What got you in music, man? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what started you? First uh, thing. Uh, that's, um, as I've always played, I think. I uh, uh, I haven't uh, had an old uncle that. He wasn't much of a guitar player, but he always had a, you know, he always, he always gave me stuff. Mm. And he gave me a guitar. I guess it was him. I think it was him. And uh, uh, it had three strings on it. And so I beat it. And I didn't know how to tune it. I beat it <laughs> and until I got another one that had a few more. And then I bought, I, I, don't, I think it was my, mo my father and my mother. Bought me, bought me a book, a Mel Bay book, because back then they didn't, you know, they didn't have internet. And that would have been the, the white one, like the pink writing with the music. Yeah, stuff yeah, on the yeah. Front of and it. the Mel Bay stuff. Yeah. So I had to. I mean, I was. I didn't really know how to uh, how to read until mm -hmm. I until I joined the school band, and then I started kind of. Now in school band, what instrument did you play? French horn. <laughs> they put me in a French horn because my sister played the French horn, and it was easier. And they had one. Yeah, there was, yeah, there was already one there. It's not wasn't my preferred instrument, and so yeah, that's how I learned. To, I learned to read. Of course, it's like it's a it's a bit of a change from a from a monophonic instrument, play one note at a time, mm -hmm. to a polyphonic instrument where you uh, you know you guard and play yourself. several. What what was the first band you was in? Once you learned the guitar, oh. you got to the level where you needed to. Man, some of these guys are still out there playing. Well, hey, uh, first band I was in. Uh, I had a guy, y'all might know him. His name's Jeff Tyler. Hey, Jeff, if you, you out there, I named you first. Uh, we, we were, we had a, a band in high school, and uh, we weren't, uh, let's just say, we weren't the extroverts of the school. We were kind of. Well, most musicians are usually the quiet guys that that's looking for that out. Mm -hmm. and did music give you that out? Gave you that yeah, opportunity? Yeah, pretty much. To but show I, wasn't, your I wasn't much of a player. He was a better player. And uh, you know, I learned some stuff from him. And uh, we had there's a guy, and y'all might know this guy too, a guy by the name of Randy Knight. Randy had a Randy's a you know drummer, and Randy lived right, right down the street from us. And so it was Jeff and Randy and a guy by the name of Mike Lindsay, who is a geologist now. And, well, he rocked. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what's pretty funny is Jeff and Randy still have hair, but Mike and I, we... Well, it's, 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 it's the entertainer's life that yeah. caused that hair thing, man, I'm telling you. you um, we were talking earlier, and you were telling me about some of the bands you were in, like you were talking about when you first started, you was a rock guitar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, those guys are around, too. Mm -hmm. The better the better ones I was in, uh, with partic one particular was some guys from Iberia, and they were pretty accomplished. Um a guy by the name of Kent Email who owns Emails Motor Supply in New Iberia. I don't know yeah. Kent. Well, Kent and uh, and I and yeah, uh, I ain't no free appetite. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Kent. Pay attention. <laughs> sorry, I couldn't he, say Emails Motor Supply. One plug. Good enough. Um, and uh, so we, you know, did that, and we, you know, um, bef one of the guys that. He kind of was in and out of it. Uh, Y'all know this guy, too. A guy by the name of Bob Holbrook. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bob didn't drum when I was in it, but Bob was actually a DJ, which is pretty pretty dang funny. And all the all the guys in that band could sing, mm -hmm. which is really good. Because some of the ones before that, that's how I became a Not singer. Because the singers couldn't sing. But anyway, Bob was a... And Bob, if I'm wrong, correct me. But... Uh, Bob was a DJ for KSMB at the time, which is hilarious because that was during the time when... Uh, when it was the rock station, yes, 94 Rocks. Right. I remember, the, I remember so, a little rock with the headphones. Yeah, and so the only other station out there that, that you know kids can listen to, that kind of stuff, and it was even deeper, was a, uh, 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 a station out of Little Rock, mm -hmm. KAAY, and you had to listen to it at like after after 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's all where all the real rock songs came. Anyway, but Bobby... Would would uh, he was privy to the songs before they came out on rock radio, mm -hmm. and so we did. I remember this like yesterday. It was hilarious. We did. Uh, we, he gave us some songs, and uh, one of them was Kansas, "Carry On My Wayward Son," and nobody had heard of the song back then. But Bobby hooked it up. Uh, remember that, Bobby? Bobby hooked us up. <laughs> well, we definitely got to send yeah. this episode yeah. to Bobby. Bobby hooked us up, <laughs> and we did the song. 
on this Battle of the Bands thing, a bunch mm-hmm. of 17 and 16 year old kids. So y'all actually they played thought, it before they thought it, was it came on. Song, which is hilarious. <laughs> they said, man, I love your song. We didn't say that. Now, do you remember the name of that band? That was a band called Zeus. 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 And we still get together every once in a while. Matter of fact, uh, see, besides Ken and besides Bob, uh, is, uh, Dr. Uh, I'm ashamed to say. Oh my God, he's, he's a, I'll, I'll remember in a minute. But he's a doctor. Oh, you do like me. He's a GP. A- after we're not talking about it anymore, I'm going to remember it later. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, some of the other bands that you've been a part, a part well, of. I, I, from there, I went on to be with a, a funk group because uh, rock wasn't making no money. But really? the funk was making some money. <laughs> so I went on, I went on to, uh, uh, to play with a band. I got hired by a band called Speed Limit. And Speed Limit was like uh, one of the hotter bands mm-hmm. from you know in that time and it was one of the more uh, money bands so we made real, 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 real good and so I went from making nothing to making a lot so, <laughs> <laughs> so I was pretty happy and I liked the guys too. now this band was Lafayette area yeah, yeah. or yeah some of the guys some of the guys had played uh, played with Gigi some of the guys had played with TK mm-hmm. and uh uh, matter of fact, a guy by the name of Kenny Alamo played. He, he, he's also still drumming. And we, after he left, we hi, uh, we hired a guy by the name of uh, Herman Brown, Rat Brown. And I think Rat is, I, I think he's still playing. But a phenomenal drummer. And and uh, we had, you know, they had some guys back then. And most of those guys were all older than me. Mm-hmm. I was like a kid. You mm-hmm. know, I was still, but like I said, I, now you was on the guitar or singing. I was on guitar. On the guitar. Yeah. And I sang too, but I was on you know primary. Guitar. Yeah, I, but yeah, because they all they, they all had singers. Mm-hmm. But as it progressed, and as the styles of music progressed, the songs were, that we were we were ending up doing for some reason were better acclimated for me. Mm-hmm. So I ended up singing a whole lot more over the next four or five years after that. Okay, so Zeus lasted, and then, then, then what came after Zeus? Well, it's like the whole speed limit thing, and that went uh-huh. on for a good while, and. Uh, I really don't know how it stopped, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that uh, I left from there for a while and I went to meet with Danny Williams. And I was in Cosmic Sky for a little bit. I know. Now you're getting into some things that I kind of, I'm old enough to remember Cosmic Sky. So we're getting into, into mm-hmm. my generation. So I, did, you know, I had to stick with them and it was a, quite the enjoyable. Now I'm going to pick on you. You told me a story when we was off camera that you're gonna tell me a story while we're on camera. Okay, I'll make it short though. You, make, you can make it short. You gotta tell me the story about okay. the light blue suit. Talk as long as you want, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I, play, I have to play with them for a while because I worked on their album and they hired me and uh, they wore these wonderful outfits uh, like Casey and the Sunshine Band thing. You know, they were shiny bodysuit thing and they had the little, I remember vividly, some of them had the stuff. And as so basically a spandex jumpsuit. Yeah, very much. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was a shiny yoga suit, <laughs> bodysuit. And uh, it zipped up, if I remember right, it zipped up the back of all things. And so it didn't leave uh, much room for imagination once it was on. <laughs> you know, either. Either they can see that you were okay. <laughs> so basically, or I they can see that you weren't okay. Basically, I could get a mental picture of you in a sky blue bodysuit. Yeah, yeah. What color was the little tassels? They were kind of a whitish, <laughs> silver white. So you were ready to be like in uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Well, yeah, I, did, I, I, didn't, I didn't get to the whole thing. Anyway. <laughs> that's, not, that's not really how it came about. <laughs> they showed up at my house. Uh, and they're pretty excited about, you know, they, they all got down and they said, hey, uh, the band leader, Donald Ray Charles at the time, it's a big old fella, wonderful guy. And he was pretty, he's pretty giddy. He, he says, I got, we got something for you. And he pulls this thing out. It's on a hanger. And I'm like, they can oh, dang. You know, like I said, I'm like 140 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> it was like a stick putting on a condom. <laughs> and, and, you know, that, that was what was going through my mind. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So I, uh, uh, you know, they wanted me to wear man, white people don't look good. <laughs> don't look good in, in that stuff. And they said, oh, come on, you're going to look great. You're gonna... So I said, okay, I'll make a deal. I'll go out in, in my bedroom, I'll put it on, and when I come out, if nobody laughs, I'll wear it to the gig. 
Well, I never had to wear it to the game. <laughs> they all laughed at you. Because they all laughed at you. So they gave me my way out. I'm not, I'm not to mention that to Daniel. When I see <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, Cosmic Sky had their career, and then what was next? Oh, okay. Well, I can... Uh, I, I went, believe it or not, I went into country for a very short time. Uh, they had this, there's a guy that he's pretty well known around here, and he was playing with a band called Southbound. His name was Sammy, Sammy here we go again, Kershaw. Sammy Kershaw. Well, Sammy was singing with him, and Sammy had done his, uh, if I remember right, uh, had done, he was working on his first album, so he's kind of in and out. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, they needed a singer, and of course, I'm not a country singer, but as fate would have it, there was a very popular up-and-coming artist by the name of T. Graham Brown. Mm -hmm. And he had like four or five tunes, and it was this kind of throat. Mm -hmm. So they brought me in for that kind of stuff, and they brought in another singer. And uh, uh, so I did that for a while. Uh, not, a, not a long, long time, but for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then that's when uh, um, uh, I got, until Sammy got back. And that's when I went, uh, I got hired by um, Fifth Avenue early, way back. So I, I did, I don't know how long I was out with him. Bunch of good guys. We played a lot too, man. We played at the old Stomper Ground. Yeah, out, out at Mon Ami. Yeah. yeah, that's something yeah. I did mention before the cameras was rolling. Uh, and it's it's kind of cool that uh, a, lot of, a lot of the guys I'm getting to talk to spent some time playing through Mon Ami. But I remember as a youngster getting in the club. Now, I'm not going to admit that I wasn't old enough to be in there, but later I was mm -hmm. a youngster mm -hmm. going to see uh, Fifth Avenue. Dude, I remember. It was I awesome. remember with Fifth Avenue, I remember opening up for the Rick James, not Rick James, but the Stone City Band mm -hmm. and the Mary Jane Girls. Mm -hmm. Open enough for them. Got a funny story for you with the Mary Jane Girls when we were at Monami. They insisted on their rider only green M&Ms. And when they bought about eight bags of M&Ms, I was the only kid running around, which I wasn't a kid, I was a teenager. They made me go and sit down and pick out the green M and M's, so they could have M and M's. I know I couldn't talk to them. They had this big old. Yeah, they were guy. real, real. Uh, I was on the stage, yeah, and they, they had, they, yeah, mm -hmm. and they, they had. They, but it was some good shows, man. And I mean, Fifth Avenue was one of the, one of the, the, the real fun bands. It was yeah, it incredible. Did, it did, yeah. It was, a, it was, it was a, a good experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I left them. I had some issues. Of course, they were all personal, and they were all mine. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> and uh, I stopped playing for a little bit, a very short time. And uh, I got, uh, I, uh, and you know, you, you guys know Andy Smith. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I played with Andy Smith for about two years. Had a great time mm -hmm. with Andy, and it was time for me to stop after Andy. Mm -hmm. of, of course, I, I I haven't even mentioned the time before I got married that I was with Greg. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of skipped over that. I don't know why. Cause <laughs> I sure enjoyed Greg Martinez. Greg Martinez. Greg Martinez. Yeah. I don't know if I know that guy. I used to always, it used to seem like Greg. Always had these killer guitar players. And one of them, who's, again, a close personal friend of mine, a guy by the name of Ray Mouton. I think Ray is playing for for for, for, for Doopsy right now. But he was out with Curly Taylor for a bit. Killer guitar player. Matter of fact, killer uh, bass player. I ran into Andy maybe Thursday of last week. Andy plays, uh, he does a, a solo gig mm -hmm. at a couple restaurants and uh, I frequented a restaurant in New Iberia that he plays at and we always chit chat and he was talking about Mr. Mouton and he had got to play with him last week at uh, oh, one of the casinos else. and he was just giddy over the fact that he got to play with Ray yeah he's something else and uh, we, we, Ray and I still we still get together um, but anyway Ray was he's like I said such a gifted player and I'm gonna mm -hmm. give him a plug a, a gifted player but I, I guess maybe he would. He was just so good that he would get bored. So they would get tired because he. I remember Greg telling me, Ray's falling asleep on the stage. And he, it was second nature. Yeah. Huh? So anyway, I don't know what happened. I think Ray quit, or or, or I, maybe it was a mutual thing. Mm -hmm. But it, it was like a couple of other things that Ray was in, and I get hired, and I'm thinking I always have to follow this guy. Mm -hmm. So I better do something. So I sang a lot more, you know, because I couldn't, I didn't have the skills that Mr. <laughs> Mouton had. Well, I tell you what, we, uh, 
Coit and I had a conversation, and a lot of the other entertainers that's come on have have given you A pluses and five stars across the board on your abilities. Good liars. The person, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. It sounds good. It's good. Notorious liars. But uh, you know, whenever we get to know each other, especially through things, we want to know the person that you are. So I got a real serious question about. I, I need to know something real strong. You're from Louisiana, right? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite dish? Yeah, really. Yeah, I'm from Brobridge. What does that tell you? Hey, what part of what part of the crawfish you like? <laughs> the etouffee or the ball? The which oh, one? The ball is my favorite. Ball crawfish. I can eat, right? I, yeah, I can eat ball crawfish six days a week and eat etouffee on the other one. That'll work. <laughs> That that's that's the best reaction that I ever got yeah. to, to. And do. you know, I always wait until after the crawfish festival because the prices well, I don't because the prices go down. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, guys, we're going to be back in a few. Y'all hang around like a hair on a biscuit. I'll practice that Hoyt. We'll be right back. Experience and my good friend, Mr. Ricky Gulas. Uh, did I say Ricky? Who said Ricky? <laughs> it is no S. <laughs> All right, 
I tell you what, you could cut, you can Ooh. cut this off, <laughs> and we can start this again. <laughs> yeah, this is the S side. Listen, hey, call me Rick. It's good. I'll be okay, calling. Okay. I'll be calling. Y'all, y'all all fussing at me way too much. <laughs> this is some <laughs> on the on the screw up for real. I use fake names a bunch of times. Never use Ricky, but that's one to consider. In case I ever do that. Yes. All right. Go ahead. We're back with Louisiana Entertainment Experience with my good friend, Tony Gula. We were talking about some of the things that, that built you up and throughout your career. And, you know, the good times, bad times. And, and a lot of things that's real inspirational about musicians is how they can go through these periods. You know, and, and could you kind of tell us about some of the things? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to, I don't want to get on too too heavy duty, but uh, I just kind of, you know, I had, I had, that was a rough patch. Mm -hmm. And um, if it would have been for my family, I don't know where. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I really don't know where what what would have come out. Particularly, my wife was just stuck with me to thin, 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 and then thick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, um, like I said, I got out. I got aware of a group that I was in where I was having I was having some struggles, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I started going to church. Uh, faith is, faith yeah. is a strong thing. I started going to church. Do. It was, it was. I guess it was my rehab. Mm -hmm. Basically, the place I went, they kind of uprooted me from all the people that I knew, and in a weird kind of way, kind of like a rehab, they put me in with different people, and I was around. I was surrounded by a whole different bunch of people. So I, it's almost like I couldn't go back to that because I had this kind of change. Yeah, and they were, and again, all wonderful people. And uh, of course, like I said, I, at, at that time, I. I, I wasn't in the clubs anymore. I, um, I found a real job. <laughs> I got a real job. And uh, so, I, again, you know, uh, we enrolled our children in uh, uh, in, a, in a Christian school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, like I said, I mean, I hate to say, use the word, I walked a narrow path. But uh, I, I became acclimated, which was a wonderful thing, mm -hmm. to, to live in that way. And it's like it changed me. Kind of driving you, yeah, to much for the better, the you know. You and it's like I said, when you, when you, when you're an old, when that that old man that doesn't know, uh, because you know, back then we had no structure, mm -hmm. you know. And what was good about this, about being in a, a you know, a, a, a faith based organization mm -hmm. where there was structure, it teaches you structure and it teaches you how to, okay, you know, there was no boundaries before, or if there were, I ignored them. You know? Kind of gave you a yeah. guide and, so, the, and, 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 so, and almost yeah. a rule book. And so, uh, uh, you know, I got to say, okay, there's a legitimate, there's legitimately a heaven, mm. and there's legitimately a hell. And so, you gotta still I got to, I got to tighten up, and I have, to, I have to be a good example to my children. Exactly. You know, and thank God they were all young, and they didn't know mm. that old guy, mm. which is pretty neat. Anyway, so I started uh, for long. I didn't play for quite a while, and. Uh, I want to say quite a while, maybe two years. Mm -hmm. and I almost got to where they weren't playing anymore. And uh, that w there was a, a worship leader mm -hmm. that heard uh, that had heard that I was a musician. And, uh, you know, whether you like it or not, your reputation kind of gets out, you know. And so they talked me into it. And uh, initially, they wanted me to audition. For I said, I ain't auditioning with nobody. <laughs> I'm not auditioning. <laughs> And so anyway, uh, I swallowed my pride, and as it turned out, they didn't really need a guitar player; they needed a bass player. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Well, you know," um, uh, so I, I played a, uh, the. The only thing they had up there at the time was a big old T60 PV bass. That thing was about as big as I was. Probably so, way more than you yeah, do. Yeah. So I played it for a bit, and then I forget how I ended up moving into guitar, but uh, I went back and played. Fort, now, I, I got some funny stories, but we're not going to talk about them. <laughs> Even though they're good stories, I wouldn't, wanna, I wouldn't want to incriminate anyone about that. But I'll just say that they like my, you know, they like my playing. You did well. Yeah. And so I played at that particular church for a while, and then I went to another one where I met Hoyt. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was on the worship team there. And I don't even know, I don't remember if they, I don't think they did. I don't think they knew I sang. Because I always just played. For years, I always just played, didn't sing. And I remember this one time, Hoyt will probably remember. I think you were there, Hoyt. They had a marriage seminar, and they wanted people to, they wanted us, if we could sing, to pick a, a love song. And it was not a Christian love song. It was a love song. 
So I picked Percy Sledge's When a Man Loves a Woman, but I sang it like Michael Bolton. You stayed kind of safe. Yeah, not really, no. <laughs> so I did it, but it was hilarious. Because, huh. you know, I did it, and it was a Saturday night banquet. When we got done, and you can ask Coy about this. When we got done, they said, hey, man, would you like to sing that on Sunday morning? And I'm thinking, sing When a Man Loves a Woman when, on Sunday morning? Really? And I did, yeah. So anyway, so I did that one, and they kind of liked it. You know, I, remember, I remember them asking me, man, how would you learn to sing like that? So I just sit in the clubs, man. Hmm. I learned to sing it. If you weren't no good, you didn't get no gig. You know, yeah, true, as simple true. as that. But I mean, I really didn't think anything of it. But I remember they, they had a guy, a counselor, and I'm not going to say his name, but he's, he was a very prominent guy. Mm -hmm. And so they had me sing it for his marriage counseling session. And he asked me, he says, uh, hey, Still I, with a man. Yeah, 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 yeah that same song. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, Man, how'd you, how'd you like to come out on my seminars with me and do that? And I said, uh, So did they think that was the only song you could sing? Well, over time, they gave me some other stuff. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they gave me some other stuff. It just hit me. Do you realize you're drinking out of a Christmas mug? Yeah. Hoy, a Christmas mug. I'm a Christmas guy, man. He's a festive person. <laughs> if I'd have known you had this cup, I'd have worn my cup. There's a perfect match to this. Now, I noticed you mentioned that T60 bass. And I love... It wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't mine. Uh, funny enough. I but I tell you, it was what. nearly the color of this coffee table. I remember, or the, actually, the the stool. The wood grain, yeah. Yeah, and it was ugly. So tell us about your new your 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 solo career. Oh, where you are now. Okay, that kind of stems from me uh, stopping at the church I was at. Mm -hmm. Well, we had other guys, and I'm just going again. I'm going to be real light about this. We had we had other guys that were playing with us, and uh, they were they were playing in the clubs, and they were hot because they were good. Mm -hmm. You know, good guys. And that was just how they earned their living. So uh, I remember being approached a couple of times by those guys and saying, man, why don't you come out and do some gigs? You know, you know it makes it makes some side money. Well, of course, I came from that. So I talked to my wife, you know, because it had been a long, long time since I had those uh, terrible pulls, you know. And uh, so I said, you know, I said, what do you think? And I said, she said, well, are you okay? If you're okay with it, let's give it a go. So I said, okay. Um, I put a group together and uh, that was before actually before I started writing and I decided you know what I want to do R&B because that's kind of where my throat is yeah. and I'm going to do stuff like you that you definitely have the voice yeah. so I put a group together and I started doing that but I, I stepped I stepped down I didn't want to be mm -hmm. I didn't want to uh, it's a not, I, I can't think of a word but I didn't want to I don't want to sh sh shine a negative light on where I was you know I just okay. I, I didn't think it would, would be proper. Mm -hmm. So, I st again, I started doing that, and uh, uh, I did, I had, while I was, actually, while I was out there, I have a buddy, and I'm going to mention his name, and I'll try to get him out here, too. His name's Ken Holloway. Mm -hmm. Well, Ken Holloway is a wonderful country singer, and uh, at the time, he was contemporary, contemporary country Christian singer. And I was in church, and so I, uh, he needed a band, so we put a band together for him. And anyway, we got to... Uh, uh, playing, we, you know, we we did the rhyming, we did uh, we did the Opry. It was, it was great, mm -hmm. you know. Got to do a bunch of stuff. Met some of them guys like a uh, Russ Taff and all, you know. Met uh, uh, Chuck Cannon, Russ for Toby Keith, uh, you know, uh, quite a few people. And uh, we uh, we did a uh, a recording. We cut an album for him in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, with a guy by the name of David Huff from David and the Giants. He had a wonderful studio there. And uh, while I was there, David, who's a phenomenal guitar player and a great, great guy, he's he's got a real, real heavy, real thick, rednecky accent. And so we're sitting down, he's got this gorgeous new console. And I remember, because it was quite a long time ago, it was before the, the days of the flat screen, and it looked like this big TV thing with the, the old Apple computers. And it looked like the back of an egg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he's at the console, and he says, uh, I'm sitting down there listening to what we had cut. And uh, apparently I made a bit of an impression on him because he said, hey, brother. <laughs> he said, uh, you like that guitar over there? It's beautiful, green, Stratocaster-type flat you know, flame top, uh, excuse me, quilted maple top. So, yeah, man, I think it's gorgeous. He said, there's an old bar down your neck of the woods, Bill's these guitars. He was here, 
and I liked it, so I got it from him. He said, I need to get you guys together and uh, hook y'all up. So he calls him right there, a guy, you know, he's a wonderful builder, Gerard Meloso, Meloso mm -hmm. Guitars. So he hooked me up with, with Gerard, and like I said, it's amazing how um, you meet these people by chance meetings, and then through another person, you get lifelong friendships, Absolutely. which is pretty pretty cool, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I went far back, I, I kind of got off topic. Mm -hmm. I started doing my own thing, and uh, but I went there. To tell you this, while I was there in my, in my friendship with Gerard, there was a young man, he was 16 years old at the time, and his name was Wes Walker. And Wes was working for Gerard, and um, Gerard, I remember Gerard telling me, wait, come back here, you need to hear this kid. This kid's crazy good. And he was not wrong. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so... Um, we had a, you know, I, I, I had a connection to him, even though he was much younger. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'll try to bring him out with me. Okay. If I play, okay good because he was just that good. Mm -hmm. So anyway, over time, Wes got married and Wes moved to Nashville. But we stayed in touch, always stayed in touch. And uh, he's he, he rolled with some, some heavy hitters, mm -hmm. you know. And again, it's just about no instrument that he could pick up that he can't master. So... We uh, we did some we did some you know some different things together and then of all people I was I was not even thinking I was you know I was kind of so your involvement with him kind of pushed you out into your well a, a bit uh, uh, it actually stemmed from like I said my wife mm -hmm. she said why you know why don't you you know you, you write and do it for other, why don't you write your own mm -hmm. you've written for other people why don't you write for yourself so I thought about it and I said I'm gonna give it a go well again I was talking to him and he said yeah why don't you write for yourself. He said, "If you," he said, uh, you, I'll, "I'll help you." He said, "Well, you know, we'll cut one." And, and he, I mean, he had, he was, he was working. I think I could be wrong, but I think at the time he was doing some stuff at Ocean Way, and some. I mean, he's. I tell you else. what, I am awesomely glad that he pushed you into it because you're incredible. I, I love your music. Like I was saying when you got here, I'm going to burn up iTunes as much <laughs> as I can. I, I'm gonna get some. Let me ask you one question: What is your favorite, your song? What's your favorite original? Oh, um, it, it's going to be one on that album. I've got two of them. It's probably the one that gets played the least. Really? Uh, it's uh, it's called Couldn't This Be Love. And the neat, neatest, neatest thing about that one is it's very a very simple, very simple part. And the reason I say it's my favorite, because I wrote one for my wife, and it's not a sweet love song. It's a mm -hmm. song, song called Honeybee. Because okay. I call her honey. Mm -hmm. And so I, anyway, it's, it's like a blue shuffle. But anyway, the, the one I like, we were cutting, and uh, I remember uh, I was doing a solo, and I was just all over the place. And I said, man, I just need to not, I need to just play it like I'm singing it. And so of all things, I started humming, humming, and then I started whistling it, and I'm, I'm cutting the track, and I'm whistling the part to make sure, I mean, I didn't think you could, hear it yeah because i was i was running direct to a cabinet out there that was mic'd mm -hmm. well apparently i had left the uh the console mic on so so it picked you up the whistle was in there so i send him the tracks i send west of the track west west is mixing them out there and he says pay special attention to the solo i want you to listen to the solo so i'm listening to it. i said what, what is that other sound that I'm hearing, I can hear. And that's on the song. Yeah, and he said, I put the, I put your whistle part in there, and I'm whistling it while I'm, and it's, it's very faint, but it's enough to where it, to change the tonal structure of the guitar Oh, I can't sound. wait to hear it. So I'm, I'm it looking there. forward to it's this. It's pretty cool. And, I have, and my second favorite mm -hmm. is a song called uh, Your Mind, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been offered to recut it by you know a few other people, mm -hmm. and it's more like a, uh, it's kind of like a an OJ's kind of song. Now, these are available on, on oh, yeah. iTunes. Uh -huh. Well, good. And your new album is also available. Uh, that's that's my last one. Okay. And, uh, you know, I like to be like everybody else and say, uh, you know, I'm working on another. But you know what the truth is? If I am, I'm just starting to. Okay. Because uh, uh, I've actually committed. I've got this project that, you know, Hoyt knows about that I'm pretty stricken with is mm -hmm. the, the uh, Love for People Foundation that's uh, working for the aging blues musicians. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I kind of like to. I kind of like to give my time. Right, you know, that's yeah. an awesome goal. And that's yeah, cause, you know, a lot of those guys. I mean, 
they're super, super, super talented. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get that time in their life where, you know, that's all they've ever done. And they've been, a, you know, they've been a talented blessing to so many. But after a while, they just can't, they can't travel anymore. And they can't make the income like they did. So they're kind of caught between the rocks. Kind of helping and support, support yeah. the artists. That's, so, that's a wonderful, a wonderful yeah. project. If I mean, the truth of the matter is, if, if I were to go on the path I went, it's very possible that I would be a recipient from that foundation. Very true, very true. And that's a way of giving back, and yeah. it's awesome. Guys, I enjoyed my time talking with Mr. Goulash. You are an incredible person. Get on get on iTunes and, and, and enjoy the music. Like I said, I'm about to burn up burn up burn up everything I got left on it because your music is incredible. It was wonderful to have met you. I enjoyed this time. Uh Please come back and see us and we can talk sure more about some I of this sure is looking for. I'm Jared, Louisiana Entertainment Experience. I'll be looking for y'all from the tractor. Y'all have a great day. I tell you what, Jared. Oh, I enjoy talking with Tony, man. This was Tony awesome. Tony Goulart. He's incredible. He's incredible. Man, I tell you what, we 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 got to keep this rolling. We need y'all support, and that's what we're here to talk to you about right now. I tell you, can I get an amen? I tell you what, we need it. We need it. We need it. It was we a lot of fun. It was awesome. Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. If you would like to see more of Tony talking about his equipment and some stories that he didn't say publicly, yeah. We need. You, you gotta come see him. You gotta uh, Patreon. You gotta sign up on Patreon. Sign up on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash L A E N T X. Our lowest membership account is only two dollars a month. Two dollars a month. The crawfish one is cool. I like the crawfish one. Oh, that was awesome. Crawfish is that awesome. Was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he, he talks about a bunch of stuff. But we have some other things. We have our roundtable sessions and our leftovers that we put on, on there that only members will see. You got to go. You get a free t-shirt. It, it is a lot of fun. It is. It is. That's a good one. You got to go check it out. So go to L.A. E-N-T-X or Patreon.com forward slash L-A-E-N-T-X I make up. him nervous whenever I'm, I'm next to him. Oh. <laughs> you think I'm a cap on you, but I'm not. We all good. <laughs> but yes, definitely go to that's what it is. It's the coffee. And it was caffeinated. Oh, it could be the track. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but yes, go to Patreon and sign up. It, it it is worth it. It is incredible. Some of the back background things we have. That's it. And I'm Hoyt. Till next time. And I'm Jared. Give a hoot and a holler to a coot and a collar. And catch Jared on the track. Y'all have a great day.